Hey everybody, so this video is for the Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 a.m. Gen Chem 1 class. So that has the CRN 10738. Uh, the CRN is a number we use to identify different classes at MBCC. So when a teacher asks, like, what class are you in? That's one way you can answer. You could also say whatever time it's scheduled for, but for a lot of your classes, they may not have a schedule. So the CRN is a really good way to let your professor know who you're talking to or who they're talking to rather, okay? So for example, it's really important when you send emails to your professors to tell them specifically which course you're in. So when you say stuff, like in my case, I teach chemistry, right? So when I ask what class are you in and you say chemistry, that means it's gonna take longer for you to get the information that you need because all of my classes are chemistry and I have, I have uh, six of them, okay? So um, it's important to tell your professor exactly what class they need to tell them to tell to give you answers about. So that's one thing to keep in mind as the semester goes on. Uh, don't assume, even if I've been your professor for two years, let's say, um, don't assume that I remember exactly which class you're in. And the questions you're going to ask me are probably specific to the class, such as when are we meeting for lecture or what's due this week or those kind of questions. Um, so it helps to get a quicker answer if you give me as much information as you can. In the syllabus, I give you a template for how to send an email to a professor. That's a good thing to use for all of your teachers, okay? It'll really help get um, the answers that you need quicker. I can't find you as easily as you can find me, all right? Because um, you probably have like, maybe like four to six professors. I have like 110 or 120 students and I can't search all of my students. I have to go through each class. So that's the rationale behind that, okay? Um, in order to know what's happening in a class, your number one guidepost is the syllabus. So let me show you how we find that in our Blackboard site. Um, I tried to make all of the information accessible in many, many places. So I'm going to show you some of the basics here. The first thing is the syllabus, like I said, so that's located right here. When you click on that, it's going to take you to two possibilities. This bottom one is just a PDF in case you have problems with Google, but the, the main one is the first one. So this one gets updated as things need to be changed across the semester. The most important part of any syllabus is always the beginning. So this heading part gives you all the information that you need to know about the class. For example, here's a question I have answered about 80 billion times this semester. And, and that is, when is class, right? Because the course search doesn't make it very obvious at all. Um, but the only day that this class can meet is Wednesdays at eight in the morning. You will click on this Zoom link, which you will also be able to access um, in, in the schedule, I'll show you that in a second, all right? But this Zoom link is where you're going every Wednesday, eight o'clock, we have class. And so it's important for you to understand what that class time is gonna be like. It's going to be a lot of engaged activities. So you, you need to really set aside that 55 minutes each week. Um, you're gonna be working in groups, you're gonna be doing worksheets, doing projects, making little presentations to give to each other, that kind of thing. So you wanna have uh, a good study space where you can kind of focus for that one 55 minute period each week on, on learning the chemistry. The rest of the lecture material is done independently and it is mostly videos and lecture notes, okay? Um, so that's the expectation. So what doesn't work well is if you're driving during that period of time or, um, you know, if, if you're trying to take care of too many things at one time, <clears throat> like I've had students who are trying to be in two classes at one time, that's probably not gonna work in this class because you actually need to do stuff um, to get the participation credit. It's not just show up and be there. I also have a habit of posing questions and giving people a few minutes to think about it. And then I might ask anyone in the class, I usually use this random name generator to pick someone and so you kind of want to be engaged and thinking about what's going on. So try to eliminate as many distractions as you can. Um, my experience has also been that if you use a camera or a microphone and a microphone, 
uh, those students tend to do better in the course overall because they're more invested. So I encourage you to use those things if you have them. Okay. Um, let's see. So the other thing to know about here is you can text me on my Google Voice. You can also call, but it's kind of odd because it like screens the call. You got to say who you are, and it takes a little bit of time before it rings through to me. Um, so if you do need to talk with me, that's fine. Just be patient until I can answer the phone. Uh, but you can also text. There's also a Discord server. So this is an app um, where you can download it either on your phone or your computer or your iPad, whatever. It's pretty much on every platform. And it's free. And you can click this link and it'll take you into a chat space where everybody in general chemistry at MVCC is, is talking to each other. Even our Gen Chem 2 students are in there and they already know how to get through this class. So that's a pretty good resource for you. And then these are office hours. So these are scheduled largely during what would have been our normal like class time, but we can't meet for most of these times because there are labs right after or right before them. So instead, you can come to a different link. You'll notice these, these Zoom sessions are not the same thing, but all my office hours are, are this one link with the same password. And so what's going to happen on this is, is if you click on it, it's going to put you into a waiting room because sometimes students need to ask me private questions. Other times it's kind of an open discussion and I'll let you into the waiting room um, pretty quickly. So it kind of depends on what's happening. But if you're in the waiting room, just be patient. I'm there and I'll let you in. And if I'm not there, I get an email. So it's okay. You can wait and I'll show up. All right. But these are the office hours that I've established for the semester so far. These will probably be cut back uh, in a couple of weeks because it's actually more than we usually do. If uh, students don't use it, if you still need that all that time, I'll keep it all. But if I find people don't need that much time, then I will pair it back based on when people are attending. Okay. So it's important to use that as a time to come and ask me questions, to come and talk about the material, to come and just touch base and, you know, make sure that you're on track. That's a good time to do that. Um, so as I said, we're going to meet once a week on Wednesdays, 8 a.m. So that means the Monday, Friday time slots are free for you to be working on the lecture material. So the lecture material for week one, the first thing you're going to do is get familiar with Blackboard. That's part of what I'm trying to show you now. So your syllabus is a great place to start. The other thing to look at um, in terms of like knowing when things are happening is the calendar. Oh, this will look different for you guys. Hang on. Teachers display look funny. So like, for example, you can see in here that I had office hours this morning. And if you click on this, it shows you the exact link uh, where I'm at. Uh, I had office hours this afternoon, same link. And then it gives you a guidance for um, like what's coming up. So for example, by Wednesday before our class, you need to have accomplished the Alex initial knowledge check. Okay. Um, and then we have class. So this is required for everybody. And then I have more office hours right after that. And I have more office hours on Friday. Oh, and also Thursday, I think. So that's all we have up there right now. So your main thing this week is just really doing the initial knowledge check, but the syllabus does have some more specifics. So if you, so you can read about every kind of assignment. This syllabus has so much information in it. I can't even, I spent three weeks writing it. So take advantage of that information. All of these blue things are links that lead you somewhere and they're interesting things to read about. Um, the more thoroughly that you read and use this syllabus on a regular basis, the better that you will do. If you get stuck, there's also a tech support area and there's tech support for Alex. Like if you can't figure out what to do or where to go, they can help you out. And they're open, you know, pretty, you know, not every single day, but they're open a lot. So you can call them. Um, there's even websites to help you learn how to use Blackboard. And there's also MVCC specific help which is normally kind of available uh, during normal business hours usually, okay? If, if you've exhausted all of the resources on the syllabus and you still don't know what to do, I also have on the Start Here tab, I have also made a, a Tech Tips series of videos that probably have the answers, okay? So check those places before you start worrying too much or emailing me, okay? It probably has your answers there. The syllabus also has 
um, important information about the materials that you need, including the technology that you need. And in that section, I tell you that using a phone or a tablet to access Blackboard is going to make it really difficult. Um, a computer is very, very helpful. And there are some available on campus. And so if you don't have a computer available at home, um, touch base with your, your SSA and they should, your student success advisor, and they should be able to help you out. All right, and so then another part, you should read about the grading, you should read all of these things. Um, another thing is the course schedule. It's very important to follow along with what's going on. And so all I did was click on the, the table of contents here. If you can't see the table of contents when you first load the document, just click on this little thing. Okay. Um, so our first chapter is basically introduction to matter. And so it tells you how we're going to approach this, all right? So your initial knowledge check I already told you about, it's due by Wednesday. But then next week, you're going to have your first objective due. So between, like, after your initial knowledge check and next Wednesday, you want to be working on understanding those topics in Alex. And you do that by registering for Alex right here. OK, that's because I set it up as a student. Hang on, sorry. Okay, so this, this part's going to look different from you guys, but I'm going to show you what it, what, it, what it looks like from the student side of things. You won't see all of that stuff. Um, so when you first go in, you're going to have to like put in some info, all right? But you don't pay for it. You don't go to the Alex website directly. You go through Blackboard, and it's going to come up with a menu like this, and it's going to show you how to use all the tools. I highly recommend going through these things. It teaches you all about what Alex is, how it works, and it's going to be a really important part of our course. It's more than just your standard online homework system. Um, so you're going to want to take that tools tutorial. I'm going to skip it. You guys should do it, all right? Um, then it will take you automatically into um, what we call your initial knowledge check. So it said it's just, you don't need to study for this. You don't need to do anything. You just need to go take it. And this is going to establish where you are in terms of math, your sort of background in science, all that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't really matter where you start because this program is designed to take you where you need to go to finish the course. So wherever you are is where you are. And that's why I say you don't need to study for it. So it's just going to ask you a series of questions. Some of them are just math. Some of them are, um, you know, chemistry. Some of them are physics. So you're going to do the best you can on it. Don't stress out about it because wherever you are, it'll, it'll help you get where you need to be. Okay. So you're going to just take this. And if you really genuinely don't know how to do something, you can say, I don't know down here. But give it a shot because even if you're wrong, it gives, it gives the algorithm some information. Okay. Once you finish that, I'm going to, I'm going to pretend like I took it. You guys don't have that option. <laughs> so this would be like what your Alex Pi looks like if you really don't know a lot about chemistry. So this person has some background in math and physics and a little bit of measurement, but that's about it. So each colored piece tells you what you know. And it's okay to start at 16 at the beginning. We don't expect you to know 100% of this yet. The point is to study and work and get 100% by the end of the, of the course. Okay, so that's like your goal. And so it's just kind of giving you a little tutorial, kind of walking you through it. And then when you finish with this, I'm going to skip that. It's getting annoying. When you finish with that, it's going to land you on this page. This is your home page for Alex. And it says that on Wednesday this week, you have 33 of 45 topics to review. This would be a student who really, um, has a lot of learning to do to be ready for chemistry. Most of you probably are going to be higher than this. I picked the lowest one. Um, so if you've had high school chemistry and stuff like that, you'll probably get more. All right. And so this is telling you, you can start your path and that's going to help you get ready. Everything in this objective, the rest of these, these topics need to be covered by Wednesday. Some of you are going to end up in a different place. Maybe you already have all those topics done and it'll say you've completed that due date. And so instead, it'll say what's due next Wednesday or even several Wednesdays from now. So the knowledge check can accelerate you past, you know, the, the assignments for this week. And that's one of the reasons I like Alex, because 
it takes you where you are and it doesn't make you do a bunch of busy work. Okay. And so you will just kind of work through, sometimes they give you some information and you're going to like check your understanding. Um, there's explanations if you really don't know what to do. So it's kind of, it's not a textbook, but it has little bits of information in there um, to help, help you figure out what to do. Okay, so that's what you just kind of want to pay attention in the upper right corner where it says, well, I'll go back to it, um, the upper right corner of your homepage, right by your pie, it'll say what's due when, right? So here, due Wednesday, okay? Um, I'll, just, I'll just pause my recording and show you what it looks like if somebody tested in above sort of this level so you can get a feeling for that. Okay, so let's, um, this is someone who's fairly experienced with chemistry, um, not at the end of the semester yet, but pretty experienced with it. So they, they've tested through all of these topics listed here. There's 89 out of a total of like 210. So they've got like 121 left, 42% um, of the way through the course. So that, as you can see, each pie slice represents a different topic and um, they have a little bit more to learn in, in matter and a little bit more in atoms and ions and molecules. But, you know, so this is telling you that if you get a menu like this, it means that you know everything that you that I expected you to know coming into the course. So what's due on Wednesday is finished. You don't have anything to worry about. And it'll allow you, oh, look, we reached the week two goal. It's also, so that means I don't have a due date coming. I didn't take this test. I just clicked the button, but. So you can see that it drops you right into what is due for you next, right? And this will be different for each person. So this particular student needs to have two more topics mastered by September 9th. And when they do, it'll, it'll change this information up here. Up next will become week two, okay? So that's kind of the, um, the process, all right? And so once you're on the path answering questions, um, you also have this menu that comes down here. And so say you're struggling with this part and you don't like it and you want to go into something different. So you can, you can choose other topics that you're ready to learn by, by clicking this little arrow right here. And then it would be a good idea to meet up with me during office hours and talk to me about the one that you're stuck on. Okay. So, um, I think that's the most important parts uh, of Alex really, and I don't know, um, some people like calendars, some people don't, I don't know. Anyway, so that's basically you do your initial knowledge check and depending on where you land with that, you might have some work to do before Wednesday. Um, and then after that, your next assignment is doing do the following Wednesday. So Alex is due every Wednesday. You wanna kind of spread out the learning. You don't wanna to try to do it all Tuesday night, okay? Because then you won't have time for office hours. Um, so, you know, depending on what parts of it, you know, what you're working on, it'll take a varying amount of time. So you should plan ahead for that. Um, after you get through this Wednesday, the best strategy is to do the reading from the textbook, uh, which is linked in the syllabus. And I'll probably put a link in each module for what Pete, like what website pages I want you to look at. Um, so first reading. And then you're going to watch some videos. They're going to be fairly short videos, but you want to actually take notes on them. I've noticed already in the first day that a lot of you are watching the videos but not writing anything down. You're not going to remember it that way. People don't retain information just hearing it one time. So a good policy, a good way to do it is you could even take notes as you go but also pause the video and take a second to summarize everything you remember, okay? And if that doesn't seem like as much information as was conveyed in the video, go back and watch it again, okay? So, so that's one advantage to online learning is, is you can actually watch me say the same thing as many times as you need it. So that's gonna all be housed into the modules here. So module one, week one and week two, that's where we're at right now. There's no content in here because not very many people have taken the initial knowledge check, okay? I don't wanna make a whole bunch of videos that nobody's gonna watch. So I'm interested to see where you guys are at and what you need to learn to move forward. 
So that's part of what Alex helps me to do. Um, but yeah, we'll just go through here. So it'll be reading and then it'll be videos while you take notes. And then usually um, you might have some questions, right? So you're going to want to go to office hours. You're going to want to start working through Alex. And when you get stuck on stuff, you can send me an email or message on Discord or, you know, come to office hours, whatever it takes. But you want to try to meet your objectives on time because you get a grade for that. And then Alex automatically, periodically will just test your knowledge again. You'll do another knowledge check. And what that will do, it, it will see how well the information has stuck with you. So you get one set of points for just completing the work by a due date. That's the objectives. You get a second grade. After a knowledge check, there's going to be a period of time, a couple of days, two or three days, where you can go into Alex and work on any of the objectives that you didn't really understand. And so that's what the knowledge checks tell us. It tells us where you're stuck. And so Alex will let you move back and fix those things. And you get a grade at the end of the semester for how much material you have actually retained. And so um, that's kind of the rhythm to it. And um, at the end of each module, you get that open review period. And we're also going to be doing projects as a class in place of exams. So you're not going to have any exams until the final. Um, Instead, we're going to be doing some writing in the discussion boards. We're going to be doing some group work in our classes. We're going to be doing some little projects to make sure that we're all on track and we're really understanding what's happening. Okay, all the details about that are in the syllabus, so check that out. Um, so speaking of discussion boards, they're located right here. It's a pretty good idea to go there and introduce yourself. We have a class of 40 people, and so far today we had 12 people do that. Um, but go there because as it turns out, people who form little study groups do better in chemistry. Okay, so that's how things are going to work. I hope that's helpful to you. Um, if you have questions, always reach out. My email is amiller at mbcc.edu. And of course, you can find all kinds of other contact information right at the top of, of the syllabus. Okay, so but make sure you go through the syllabus and read it really carefully. Okay. See you in class.